policy that was long past its expiration date. The final end to the Cold War. The gateway to Cuba, closed to Americans for more than five decades, now appears to be swinging open. My name is Sven Lindblad, and I'm the CEO of Lindblad Expeditions. Over the past 50 years, we've led travelers across the world, from Antarctica to the Galapagos Islands. We believe in a planet without borders, that the Earth and all its natural wonders belong to everyone. We've traveled to Cuba on a reconnaissance mission to try and better understand how we might begin to explore Cuba without exploiting it. The legacy of President Fidel Castro has been well documented. What's less well publicized is his love for the natural world, his passion for deep sea diving, and his commitment to the environment. In fact, one of the many failed attempts the CIA made on his life involved poisoning his wetsuit. In the late 1990s, Castro's government began a push to protect local waters implementing a fishing ban across almost 400 square miles of coastline. Over the following decades, this strategy of protection over short-term profit proved incredibly successful. Marine life blossomed and now boasts literally thousands of endemic and other species. Cuba is culturally rich as well. Cuban music is internationally renowned and the island is home to no fewer than nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Towns and cities remain completely free of advertising. In many ways, visiting Cuba is like going back in time. But it appears Cuba's time of relative isolation is drawing to a close. Hotel chains and cruise lines are already promising vast wealth in exchange for access. And while there are many Cubans who may relish the change, rapid, massive change will inevitably bring challenges to the Cuban people, to the environment, and to how visitors will experience the Cuba of the future. I want everyone who travels to Cuba with us to see the Cuba I saw in my reconnaissance. I want our guests to experience really personal encounters with a variety of Cuban people, to go into the bars and restaurants, hear the music, see the dance and the art that conveys the vibrancy of the culture. And I want everyone who's willing to put on a snorkel or scuba gear and actually see what the truly pristine Cuban ocean environment looks like. And in our expedition, which takes place on land and sea, they can. I feel a real sense of mission about this. I want our guests to have an authentic experience of Cuba because I believe it will enrich them and because I believe by doing so they will become advocates for protecting and preserving all that makes this island nation unique and vital.